Thank you very much, Jeff. Um, wow, it's, uh, it's exciting to be here with everybody. I want to thank everybody for uh, trekking down to Indianapolis, for Jeff and his crew here uh, in Indianapolis for hosting us. Um, we're excited to uh, lead into our 2018 Academic Emergency Medicine Consensus Conference, aligning the Pediatric Emergency Medicine Research Agenda to Reduce Health Outcome Gaps. Uh, first of all, I think uh, we need to introduce ourselves as the tour guides for this particular day of pediatric adventure. My name is Paul Ashimini. I am from the Department of Emergency Medicine and the Department of Pediatrics at the Rady Children's Hospital in San Diego and the University of California, San Diego. The co-chair of this conference is Kurt Denninghoff, who is from the Department of Emergency Medicine and Diamond Children's Hospital in Tucson and the University of Arizona. So, we're honored to uh, serve in this particular role today, uh, and we want to welcome you to uh, this conference. For those of you who are interested, uh, we have a, a wireless access. You can check out the network and the password. Thank you to Vituity for providing the Wi-Fi coverage. Um, and in the spirit of the consensus conference, we thought we'd share a little um, cartoon. Uh, so please, if you need to uh, get wireless access, this is the uh, code. Um, so the front matter, uh, we have no financial disclosures. And we do like to wish to recognize uh, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality and the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute uh, these entities have provided uh, the bulk of the funding for this particular conference, and so I'd like to express our appreciation to these entities for allowing this conference to happen. And although uh, CME regulations preclude us from specifically naming the sponsors or, or putting up the logos for these uh, sponsoring entities, we'd like to acknowledge the seven entities that have provided additional funding for this conference. Thank you. And we'd also like to take a moment to uh, dedicate this conference to Christopher King, who passed away tragically earlier this year in March. Um, Chris really was a trailblazer in the field of pediatric emergency medicine. Uh, after finishing medical school at Yale and finishing an emergency medicine residency at the Medical College of Pennsylvania, he then went on to uh, Pediatric Emergency Medicine Fellowship at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. In fact, he was the first emergency medicine trained fellow trained at CHOP. During the course of his career, Chris actually came up with, along with others, the first uh, curriculum for emergency medicine graduates who uh, decided to pursue a career in pediatric emergency medicine and fellowship training. And so Chris and his group uh, came up with that first uh, PEM curriculum for uh, EM graduates. Many of you at this conference will know Chris as the Chair of Department of Emergency Medicine at Albany Medical College. Some of you will know him as an Executive Committee member of the uh, Association of uh, Academic uh, Medical Chairs, Department Chairs. Um, I know Chris, I knew Chris, uh, from my residency days at the University of Pittsburgh. Chris was uh, uh, an attending physician in the Department of Emergency Medicine at Pitt, uh, an attending physician at the Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh, and uh, as a new uh, resident uh, coming to the Pittsburgh program, uh, Chris really served personally as a role model for, for me. Um, there were really there was nobody like Chris uh, at Pitt, and there are very few of us kind of uh, outside of Pitt. But Chris showed me that uh, you could walk the world of both emergency medicine and pediatrics and have a success and have a successful career in both. He was generous with his time. He was generous with his advice. He was a wonderful mentor, and uh, I think we'll all miss him. Um, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, several people, uh, actually many people, 
um, for, because of a conference of this size and magnitude with this number of entities, you know, this is impossible to do uh, without the help of some great people. This has really been a three-year journey, and uh, we would be remiss without acknowledging some uh, important players. And like I said at the, uh, at the rehearsal dinner prior to this, this really is kind of like a wedding in the sense that, you know, I'm, I'm a little nervous, and I know I'm going to forget to thank some people, so please don't take offense. Uh, it's not intentional. Uh, and truly, uh, we really appreciate all of your help. First, uh, as Dr. Klein had mentioned, we wish to thank uh, Jen Walthall. So Jen, uh, a few years back, three years back, in fact, really conceptualized this idea of having a pediatric emergency medicine consensus conference. So she drafted the initial proposal. She initially kind of, she got the initial cadre of people involved. She submitted the initial proposal to the SCM board and got this approved. As Kurt says, this is uh, Jen in uh, her action shot as the Secretary of the Family and Social Services Administration of Indiana. So when she was appointed to this role a year and a half ago, she had to resign as chair. And that's when Kurt and I kind of got bamboozled into this particular role. So I know we've spent our time, half our time, kind of praising Jen for her foresight and swearing at her kind of behind her back and kind of sticking little pins in her Jen Walthall voodoo dolls. Um, but in any case, this conference wouldn't have gotten off the ground without Jen's uh, foresight. So thank you, Jen. We'd really like to uh, pay special acknowledgement to our subcommittee chairs. Um, this has really been a lot of work, and although Kurt and I have really kind of overseen much of this, really kind of the ground level work has been done at the subcommittee level and will be done by the subcommittee levels. And I, I know for us kind of walking into the chairship of this uh, committee, um, it, it really could not have been done without the expertise of these seven folks. And uh, we just wanted to thank you publicly. Um, Kathleen Edelgeist uh, from the University of Colorado, Isabel Barada from Hostra and uh, Northwell Health, uh, Jean Clegg from Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard, uh, Maybelle Koo from Minova Fairfax, Chris Merritt from Brown, Mike Stoner from Nationwide Children's, and Prashant Mahajan from Michigan. Guys, we could not have done this without you, and thank you so much for your contributions. We know you're all busy, and the fact that you contributed this was just uh, really a, a lifesaver for Kurt and myself. Um, and again, we have, there's a long list, and, and uh, uh, so please bear with us, but I think it's important to acknowledge kind of the contributions of all the people, the committees. Um, you know, th as great as the subcommittee chairs were, uh, their greatness came on the backs of the subcommittee members who have really done uh, just amazing work and the contributions of each and every one of you uh, have not gone unnoticed. So Rahul Bott, uh, Troy Denslow, Andrea Fang, Sean Fox, Jeffrey Hom, uh, Ashley Strobel, Sunny Tat. Um, Jessica Wall, Eric Weinberg on the Education Committee. For the EMS Committee, uh, Kathy Brown, Paula Denslow, Joel D'Onofrio, who will be our official tweeter. Thank you, Joel. Uh, Matt Hansen, Brooke Lerner, Lenora Olson. Oops. Uh, um, on the Non Children's Hospital Subcommittee, Mark Auerbach, uh, Kimmy McCoon, Lee Benjamin, Madeline Joseph, M Moon Lee, Kim Mears. Uh, Emery Petrak and Dinah Wallen. On the research subcommittee, uh, Jill Barron, Sylvia Bresson, uh, Corey Chimpitazzi, Stephen Friedman, Paris Keen, Aaron Kornblith, uh, Nate Cooperman, Sam Lamb, uh, Lise Nikovic, and Damian Rowland. Thank you for your help. And finally, on the workforce subcommittee, uh, Chris Amato, Mary Kay Balashotis, uh, Amanda Bogey, Ann Diedrich, Mike Girardi, Kajal Khanna, uh, Mose Dinajad, and then Fred Wu. Again, all of you, thank you very much for your contributions. We'd like to thank uh, the editorial staff of Academic Emergency Medicine. We met Jeff Klein, but we'd also like to, in particular, thank Rob Cloutier and Rakesh Mystery, uh, the guest editors for this particular uh, consensus conference article. Not only are they article uh, editors, but they provided really a lot of structure and support for the subcommittee work that we're about to embark on. 
We'd like to thank our keynote speakers, Nate Cooperman. I think uh, it's uh, fairly uh, obvious that uh, when we kind of think of the face of pediatric emergency medicine, uh, Nate's face kind of comes up. You know, and uh, as, as distinguished as we know Nate's uh, impact has been on pediatric emergency medicine, it's nice to know that Nate was recently recognized with a promotion to distinguished professor of the Department of Emergency Medicine in the Department of Emergency Medicine and Pediatrics at the University of California, Davis. We're also thrilled to invite Terry Klassen and have Terry Klassen speak at our conference. As many of you know, as most of you know, Terry is an internationally renowned uh, pediatric emergency medicine uh, researcher with an emphasis on translational research. Um, we were especially uh, happy to lure Terry down to Indianapolis, which was challenging to, do, challenging to do in the middle of the Western Conference playoffs at the National Hockey League. So at the meeting last night, Terry made it fairly clear that we needed to be done by 8 o'clock before the puck dropped of the, King, the, the Golden Knights and the Jets. And if we were any later than that, then thing, bad things were going to happen. And sure enough, 801, this is what Terry looked like. <laughs> Sorry, Terry, about last night. Finally, and most importantly, I don't know if Melissa McMillan is here. Uh, if she's not, we just wanted to publicly recognize uh, uh, Melissa. Honestly, if there's a way we could have three designated co-chairs for this conference, Melissa would be the third. Uh, she has really provided just, uh, just uh, amazing support for this. She's kind of been a veteran of numerous consensus conferences, and although Kurt and I have worked on the content along with our subcommittee members, really the logistics of this particular conference was all Melissa. And so I wanted to thank you publicly for that, Melissa. Um, again, just we could not have done this conference without you, so thank you. Okay, so kind of moving on, why are we here? So we're here to talk about the disparities in pediatric emergency care, the health care gaps, right? And in 1993, the Institute of Medicine put forth a seminal report on the emergency care system for children, which really was a fairly damning report on the uh, on the quality of pediatric emergency care, and this was followed up in 2006 by another Institute of Medicine report, which really looked specifically at pediatric emergency care. And I think the phrase that kind of stuck out in the genesis of this particular conference was the sentence, you know, if there was one word to describe pediatric emergency care in 2006, 2006, it is uneven. So the question for us and the task for us today is to determine whether or not, whether this question really still holds. What Has this changed in 2018? To accomplish and to investigate this further, the goals of this particular conference are to align pediatric emergency medicine leaders across organizations and foster new leadership, to set the research agenda for pediatric emergency medicine across all points, access points of the emergency care system, and help develop pediatric emergency medicine expertise across all providers who care for acutely ill and injured children, and to integrate pediatric emergency medicine research networks, goals, and objectives. The reason why this is relevant is that now, now meaning 2015, where we have the most recent National uh, ha Hospital Ambulatory Care Survey data, there are 137 million emergency departments in 2015. And of those, 27 million of those visits were by children less than 15 years of age. Okay. That equates to about 73,000 pediatric visits a day, 20% right, of the emergency department volume. Ask ourselves, we ask ourselves, how are we doing today, you know, and from that first uh, report in 1993 out of the, inst from the Institutes of Medicine, um, Evie Allison Drini and Joe Wright wrote that despite the fact that the 1993 IOM recommendations were made more than 20 years ago, progress on improving the quality of care for children in emergencies has remained slow at best. This is why we're here. What are the gaps? The gaps are many. 
Right? There's an uneven distribution of pediatric emergency medicine expertise. And we're not just talking about pediatric emergency physicians, but we're really talking about the frontline providers of acute uh, care to ill and injured children. Emergency physicians, pediatricians, family physicians. We know that there's an uneven distribution of pediatric patients. We know that patients preferentially will go to certain hospitals. We know that the distribution of kids uh, varies from hospital to hospital, from region to region. We know that there are emergency department and emergency preparedness disparities. This is kind of the work of Marianne Gaucher. Uh, and, and she's pointed out that really there's some, there is really a varying degree of preparedness among emergency providers. There is a lack of high quality data and although that this is being addressed uh, really through much of the work of the uh, PCAR network, we know that the evidence base that supports a lot of the decisions that we make is limited. And then finally, we know that there's, there's difficulties between communication or communication between organizations. Pediatric emergency medicine is a unique entity which really falls under the auspices of two different specialties, pediatrics and emergency medicine. Just for my curiosity, how many people in this room went to PAS? Okay. So that's a pretty good number, right? More than actually I was expecting. But you know, this highlights some of the dilemmas that we face as pediatric emergency providers. You know, we're walking the worlds of emergency medicine and pediatrics. The two big academic conferences for pediatrics and emergency medicine are within a week of themselves. Right? And perhaps your attendance uh, really is kind of decided by whether or not you're a fan of Toronto or Indianapolis, whether you're a Maple Leafs fan or I guess there's really not an ice hockey team in Indiana, but the point being is that you know there are two major organizations that really claim stake the claim on pediatric emergency medicine, and oftentimes those are not those organizations are really not sinking. Okay. Now, with that being said, let's not forget about some of the successes, and these are recent successes. You know. We know that uh, both the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American College of Emergency Physicians have started the Advanced Pediatric Emergency Medicine Assembly, which has been going on now for eight or nine years, right? Sean, Sean is a, a leader in that particular um, movement, you know, which represents really one of the first and largest um, educational conferences uh, that are coordinated by these two entities, which have not necessarily played well together when it comes to uh, defining who takes care of children acutely. We know from an academic standpoint, uh, the uh, ACGME has commissioned and representatives from the American Board of Pediatrics and the American Board of Emergency Medicine have worked on pediatric emergency medicine milestones, right? So a couple people in this audience have been serving on that committee. Thank you, Maybelle. But uh, we know that this particular document really has shaped, is shaping, really the training of pediatric emergency medicine fellows. I think we all in this room are all familiar with the successes of the EMSC programs and the um, entities w which uh, EMSC supports, such as PCARN and the National Pediatric Readiness Project. These are great successes, right? These are examples of when vested stakeholders work together, we can get a lot done to advance the cause of emergency care for children. So finally, in the next few minutes, we want to talk just briefly about some of the mechanics of this particular conference and how we went about uh, getting you all here today and kind of shaping the agenda that we have today. Uh, this is, after all, a consensus conference. So we've really enlisted the input from a lot of different organizations. From the get-go, we've asked uh, multiple stakeholders to provide input and some guidance in this particular conference. Uh, prior to even submitting the application for this conference, we uh, did a, a fairly extensive amount of pre-conference data collection. You know, throughout this process, we've asked stakeholders, not just the people in the room, but people associated with these stakeholder entities to provide input. Not only was this input important in shaping the survey and kind of this uh, follow-up survey that we'll talk about briefly, um, that your input today 
will go and shape really what the output of this particular conference is. We're very proud of the fact that we have enlisted the input of our patient advocates. I think many of them are at this table here. Um, thank you for coming. I think one of the things that we do well at conferences like these is focus on the technical aspects of research and academic output. One of the things I think we do less well is really kind of go back to the focus as to why we're doing this in the first place, which is the patient. So as you know, we get all these experts that talk about uh, their entities and, and the, the silos in which we've kind of artificially placed them, I think when it comes back down to it, you know, we really kind of want to bring all the special expertise, all this education that you have, all the scholarship that we bring, and bring it forth to the service of the patient. And for that reason, we're really thrilled to have the input of our patient advocates at this conference. So thank you for coming. Finally, <coughs> Moving into the 21st century, 21st century, right, we have enlisted our social media team. Many of you at this table, thank you for uh, twittering us, I guess, uh, really. And as uh, some of us old people know, uh, this is a way to get in touch with the kids nowadays, right? So we will be live tweeting this uh, in real time. Um, so hopefully we'll get a little bit more of a youthful audience to kind of participate at least remotely. Um, talking about, so just going back to uh, the consensus, um, when this first, when, again, when uh, Jen and others first conceived of this idea, we really tried to get the input at the very beginning from various stakeholder organizations that you see listed here. You know, and this is in addition to kind of the personal context that everybody on the planning committee reached out to, but really wanted to uh, embrace uh, the um, input from a lot of different organizations that really kind of have a vested interest in providing quality emergency care to children. We conducted a pre-conference survey or pre-application survey which was really uh, a large needs assessment and this went out to stakeholder organizations. We got a lot of input you know, and based upon this input we identified uh, eight different areas of potential focus that ultimately got narrowed down to the five subcommittee themes that we have today. Pediatric Emergency Medical Services, Pediatric Emergency Medicine Research Networks, Pediatric Emergency Medicine Education, Pediatric Emergency Medicine in Non-Children's Hospitals, and Workforce Development for Pediatric Emergency Medicine. <clears throat> The subcommittees is where we've been doing the bulk of the work for the last, oh, six months, 12 months or so. Uh, and the subcommittees were tasked with kind of developing these specific areas of focus of sub the subcommittees and refining these particular topics by eliciting input from not just the committee members, but from outside experts and outside entities. Um, as we mentioned, uh, the survey that hopefully many of you filled out a few weeks uh, before this conference, we use, the subcommittees have used that data to help reprioritize kind of the, the topics for discussion today. You know, and again, in an, an attempt to uh, attain as much input from uh, stakeholders as possible, we opened that survey up to anybody who is interested, not just the attendees of this particular conference. So for those people who couldn't make it, uh, uh, we really tried to incorporate the voices of people who could not make it to this particular conference today. And finally, what you will see is kind of the work product, uh, which will result, uh, uh, which will kind of be um, manifested by publications in a special issue of academic emergency medicine. This is probably not, or as we're hoping, how the consensus process worked in committee, but who knows, who knows, right? Finally, with goals and objectives, um, we really asked our subcommittees to make sure that the topics that we were going to be discussing today or prioritizing today kind of answered one of these seven key quality questions, right? How safe is pediatric emergency care? How effective is pediatric emergency care? How patient-centered is pediatric emergency care? How timely is pediatric emergency care? How efficient is pediatric emergency care? How equitable is pediatric emergency care? And how prepared is pediatric emergency care, really? These are the questions uh, and, and the characteristics of quality, kind of as defined by the Institute of Medicine in their 
crossing the quality chasm report. And really, if the topics we're going to be discussing don't answer one of these or address one of these seven entities, why are we talking about this? this is, we're really aiming towards some quality research and quality output. Our subcommittee goals, <coughs> EMS wishes to create a research agenda for the pediatric EMS research community that will advance the science of EMS for children and ultimately improve patient outcomes. Education, we want to the education committee aims to introduce a research agenda that can unify and advance pediatric emergency medicine education, providing a network for ongoing progress and improve outcomes for acutely ill and injured children. Non-children's hospitals, which is to include general emergency departments based in non-children's hospitals and creating a research agenda to advance the quality and safety of pediatric emergency care across all emergency departments, understand the challenges, and enhance the collaboration with children's hospital to achieve optimal health outcomes. Research networks, the goal of the research network subcommittee is to increase attendee understanding of and participation in and prioritization of pediatric emergency medicine network research and to demonstrate how pediatric emergency me medicine network research results can improve the care of acutely ill and injured children. Finally, for workforce, they aim to delineate and prioritize a research agenda to advance our understanding of the unique workforce needs in the emergency care of children in the interest of ensuring excellence in pediatric care and to improve patient outcomes across emergency care settings. As to how the day is going to progress, uh, after this particular talk, we're going to have our first uh, morning keynote address uh, uh, delivered by Dr. Cooperman. We're going to take a break uh, and then go into our first uh, breakout sessions. Um, we're going to ask you to self-select uh, which committees, uh, subcommittees you wish to attend. We have three in the morning, uh, and they'll be located um, in these rooms. We're going to break down these rooms, um, and uh, these uh, groups will be uh, EMS Research, EMS, uh, I'm sorry, Emergency Medicine Research Networks and Education. We're going to take a break and then segue into the lunch and uh, the uh, patient uh, uh, advocate panel, you know, which we've subtitled The Power of Collaboration. Rakesh is going to be our moderator for that session, and we have our four advocates uh, who are going to be up and telling their stories. Um, we're going to provide for a question and answer session, we'll take a break, uh, go into our afternoon breakout sessions, and then close with uh, Dr. Claussen's uh, uh, plenary address, um, and we'll uh, provide the uh, reports of the individual breakout sessions to the big group uh, at the end. Again, for those of you who tweet, these are, I think they're called hashtags, right? Hashtags, <laughs> right? So uh, please feel free to tweet liberally. If my 13-year-old kid were here, she would be holding her face in embarrassment, but I think this is how you do it, right? And then finally, 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 we wanted to thank you all again for your participation. I know everybody, every single person to a person in this room is very busy. And we know it uh, is difficult to make time in your busy schedules to come out here. Um, we appreciate your commitment to uh, this particular topic. We, admit, uh, we really appreciate your dedication to wanting to better the care of acutely ill and injured children. Uh, and we thank you for your time. Hopefully this is not the consensus that you're going to obtain in your committees. For those of you who can't read this, at last we've reached a consensus. This meeting is boring. Remember, consensus, it's easier to go down with the ship if everybody is on board. Thank you.